What's going on guys? My name is Chronic and welcome back for more Chivalry 2. Today I have a comprehensive guide to combat, something that should help anyone from beginner to master. It's a guide chock full of different tips and strategies and with it I hope to tie together some of the different aspects of Chivalry 2 combat for you. With that said, let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to be talking about today is initiative. Not understanding initiative is probably the number one reason for constantly dying in Chivalry 2. When you get into a fight, whoever starts the duel is considered to have the initiative. If it is your attack, once you are either blocked or countered, it then becomes the opponent's initiative. Initiative is your turn in combat, in simplest of terms, and it becomes very easy to recognize whose initiative it is, or whose it was supposed to be when you're lying there with your head separated from your body. Gambling refers to attacking when you do not have the initiative, hence the name. It is very likely that you will take a hit if you swing a gamble, but if you can time it just right, you can essentially get a free attack. This is especially effective with the heaviest of weapons, such as the Highland Sword or Maul, which can be easy to block and counter against. So now that we understand initiative a little bit, it's time to talk about footwork and positioning. It becomes evident very fast that your positioning matters quite a bit in Chivalry 2. How many times does one need to die from behind before they realize they should keep an eye on the space behind them? Footwork, as I'll probably mention in every combat skill video I ever make, is a means to escape an enemy's attacks and set yours up without the fear of getting hit. Using dodges to get out of the way and timing attacks to land as you reach your destination will undermine your opponent and keep them on their toes. The more stressed and jumpier you make your opponent, the more likely they are to miss. And when you control the fight, you won't miss. Footwork isn't exactly a teachable skill since every attack can be different from the last, but you will grow to recognize the best movements for the right situations. It's not like we have extremely advanced movement mechanics here, it comes down to how well you can dodge an attack and how you control the space directly in front of you. Now, hopefully that was helpful because I'm trying to keep this as streamlined as possible because it's most likely going to be a big video, but talking about footwork brings us to our next topic of the day, situational awareness. The art of simply recognizing what's going on around you and what that can mean for you and your allies. Situational awareness is an oft forgotten part of life when it comes to video games, especially in a game where you run at each other with giant battle axes, but you need to recognize exactly what's happening around you. Say someone's swinging that halberd a little close. If you're paying attention, you'll see the hilt in the corner of your screen and it gives you a chance to get out of the way. If not, you just got a surprise hit to the side, potentially giving initiative to the enemy you're focused on or even just killing you instantly. Another important topic for today is blocking. Blocking is your worst enemy most of the time. It's not Call of Duty, there's no need to hold the aim button like you're firing a gun. Sorry archers, although I'm pretty sure you're watching the wrong video if you haven't realized it. But anyway, blocking will open you up to the favorite attack of the noob and the tryhard alike, the kick. A well-placed kick will break your block, stun you in the process, and allow them to get a free hit on you and steal initiative. Blocking is a very important skill in Chivalry 2, but because it opens us up to the different deflection moves like countering and reposting. The counter is a retaliatory move, meant to match an attack and push it away using its own force. This opens the opponent up to a follow-up, usually of a different type than the counter, to decrease the chances that this attack will be blocked. The counter can be very effective at early levels, but gets very easy to combat eventually. You'll find yourself in back and forth fights where both warriors are highly successful with every counter, and it'll become more and more pressing to use fainting and reposting to decrease your time spent recovering, which leaves you vulnerable to attack. I've already talked about it a couple of times in this video, but now it's time to actually give it some attention. Reposting. A riposte is the way more efficient cousin of the counter. A riposte is what is most often referred to as a parry, since it opens the offending opponent up to a free hit after their attack. Well-placed riposte can end a fight very quickly, assuming the opponent isn't quick enough to counter and riposte consistently. A higher level fighter will use a blend of countering and reposting, which can be very hard to grasp at first, but also completely necessary. Both have very specific and important applications on the battlefield, which you'll come to recognize by using both. A riposte is quick and a counter is slow, but both effectively do the same thing. Break your opponent's attack and land either a quick or devastating follow-up blow to their exposed body. Something to keep in mind while you're fighting in chivalry is your stamina. Stamina can either be your greatest resource or your strongest downfall. Playing with the opponent's stamina could lead to a very easy kill, but allowing yours to drain can leave you unarmed and battle crying at your enemies with your fists raised in a last ditch effort to cause some damage. Blocking, attacking, or dodging too much can all cause your stamina to drain, and it's recommended not to do any of these actions continuously. There should always be dead moments, with your weapon down, analyzing your opponent. Learn to block only when you need to, and it'll become your best friend. 
A chunk of stamina is also replenished upon any successful hit or block, so use that to your advantage, specifically when fighting multiple opponents that might provide multiple hits in a row, and throw a kick at anyone who refuses to let their guard down. It kills their stamina and causes them to stumble. That'll teach them. This brings us into some of the more advanced combat techniques such as fainting. A feint is basically a fake out meant to make your opponent block one way so you can hit them from another direction. It's a super easy concept to grasp, but a very complicated one to master as we only have 14 potential attacks for enemies to get a feel for. Try to create your own feint combinations that feel fluid and provide you with good results. For example, I like to do a full slash followed by a fake slash into a heavy overhead. This shows people that I'm focused on trying to get a slash in. It makes my opponents comfortable and egotistical, and when they think they're getting used to my incessant slashing, I drop the giant sword on top of them, and they lose their head. Pretty effective if you ask me. One of the most important pieces of combat in Chivalry 2, and all medieval slashers for that matter, is controlling the speed of your weapon using excelling and dragging. First, we have what is called excelling, or accelerating an attack. When you initiate, look all the way into that attack. Swing through your opponent completely. If you slash left, look to the left as your sword passes through them. This will take the enemy out of your immediate sightline, but your weapon will land the hit faster than theirs if you initiate your attack first. Your attack will always land exactly where you were looking unless interrupted. The opposite of excelling is referred to as dragging. This would be dragging a hit across your screen, slowing your attack speed down as a result. Your opponent might be changing up their swing speed and trying to draw you in with feints and footwork maneuvers. Take a step back and start your swing just after they start theirs. As they come forward with their attack, move backward out of the way and allow your attack to release slowly across your screen as theirs goes by. It works, but it takes some time to recognize when it works best and how to properly slow your attacks down as you throw them. Recognizing initiative and getting a good pattern of footwork built will also help you with this. Dragging and excelling are very effective against solo opponents or groups of enemies, and learning how to properly tie these skills into combat can keep you alive in situations you never would have survived before. Alright guys, that's everything I got for you today. So thanks for watching, especially if you made it to the end, and I hope you learned enough to get out there and start dominating. Please like and subscribe for more content like this to come, and tell me in the comments below, Agathian, Mason, or Tenosian. I've been pro-Agatha ever since they added the Galaglass armor and the Scottish voice, because, you know, Highland Alright, take it easy guys. Chronic, oh. The dictator requests our compliance. What say you?